Hey ladies, welcome to the Mocha Women's Health Primer, where we discuss all things women's health with a mocha twist. I'm Dr. Tiffany Wittes, and I'm on a mission to educate, elevate, and empower you to control your health narrative. August is National Breastfeeding Month, and today we're going to discuss breastfeeding myths in our community. Let's get into it. <laughs> Breastfeeding myth number one, the modern black woman does not need to breastfeed. This could not be further from the truth. Black breastfeeding is a key public health concern for our community. We not only have the highest infant mortality rates, but also the highest maternal mortality rates of any other race or ethnic group in the United States. Increasing black breastfeeding numbers is a key component to changing this narrative. Why? Black breastfed infants are less likely to suffer from respiratory infections, GI infections, allergies, ear infections, necrotizing enterocolitis, a devastating GI disease that primarily affects preterm infants, and we are less likely to lose them to sudden infant death syndrome. Black mothers who breastfeed are less likely to experience postpartum hemorrhage, one of the leading causes of maternal mortality. They're also less likely to experience postpartum depression, which is also another leading cause of maternal mortality. They're also less likely to experience breast and ovarian cancer, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. I could go on and on. The point is, the modern black woman absolutely needs to breastfeed. Our lives and those of our infants might absolutely depend on it. Breastfeeding myth number two, everyone uses formula. Wrong again. Actually, the majority of women start off breastfeeding. That includes about 70% of black women and that's regardless of race, income, or family history. It may seem like everyone is using formula because often giving a baby a bottle is more visible or more obvious than breastfeeding, but the reality is when you see a woman give a child a bottle, you have absolutely no idea what's in that bottle. It could be formula, it could be express milk. Now, black women do have lower rates of breastfeeding continuation and exclusivity, and that's due to things like social barriers, lack of support, and job constraints. Breastfeeding myth number three, breastfeeding can make your breasts sag. It's actually the pregnancy itself that causes the breast ligaments to stretch, and this can happen whether you breastfeed or not. Your age, family history, number of pregnancies also play a role. Breastfeeding myth number four, formula has more vitamins and nutrients than breast milk. The exact opposite is true. Your breast milk is perfectly tailored to meet your baby's needs and is your baby's optimal nutrition. The reason your chocolate milk is able to protect your baby from all of the diseases we previously listed is because it contains antibodies. Formula does not contain antibodies. Antibodies save lives. Your chocolate milk can help save your baby's life. Breastfeeding myth number five. Breastfeeding can spoil a child. You just spent the last months growing this child in your personal space. Of course, it's completely natural for both mom and baby to want and need to continue to maintain that personal attachment through breastfeeding. Infants do not need to learn how to fend for themselves at such a young age. Studies have shown us time and time again that breastfed babies grow up to be confident, self-sufficient, independent individuals when their needs are met, and the bond between mother and baby can last a lifetime. Breastfeeding myth number six, moms who have had breast surgery cannot breastfeed. In fact, most moms who have had breast or nipple surgery are able to produce some milk. Not all of these moms will be able to have a full milk supply. This should not prohibit you from breastfeeding as some milk is better than none at all. Breast reduction procedures, lifts, and augmentations do have the ability to affect the nerves and the ducts in the breast, which can lead to an impact on lactation. Breast implants below the muscle usually impact milk supply less than those above the muscle. Breast surgeries that involve the areola, the pigmented area around the nipple, and surgeries that involve complete detachment of the areola and nipple are more likely to reduce lactation. This can sometimes improve over time. There are also some instances where moms had underdeveloped breasts to begin with, which prompted their desire for breast augmentation. Moms with this condition may have insufficient milk glands, which can lead to an insufficient milk supply. It's also important to note that the research surrounding the safety of breastfeeding with silicone breast implants is insufficient. There are no recent reports of adverse effects. The American Academy of Pediatrics has previously stated that the evidence is insufficient 
to consider silicone breast implants a contraindication to breastfeeding. Breastfeeding myth number seven, formula feeding is easier than breastfeeding. Initially, the learning curve for breastfeeding is steep, but the more you do it, the easier it gets, and eventually you won't even have to think about it. Breastfeeding is actually way more convenient than formula, which requires you to find the right nipples, the right bottles, the right formula. When you go out, you have to pack all the supplies. You have to concern yourself with measuring, mixing, heating the formula, sterilizing the parts. It's much to say the least. Breastfeeding myth number eight, formula is cheaper than breastfeeding. Breastfeeding alone can save a family $1,500 in baby's first year of life alone. That concludes part one of breastfeeding myths in our community. Stay tuned for part two. As always, I appreciate you. Take good care and stay healthy, friends. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more like it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Take good care.